Hello there to all of the New York Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. Welcome in to the Stat Prediction Video Defensive Edition, where I take a couple players from the Giants defensive side of the ball, look at what they did last year and what was incredible defense, and see what I think they could do this year. Now, I did an offensive version of this a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna link that video right now in the top right. And I never got to do a defensive version of this last year, but I need to do one this year because the Giants defense in 2020 was stout. And then we got even better in terms of st talent and additions that we made in the off season. I'm very excited to see what could happen here. Last year, we ended the season as the ninth overall defense in the NFL. Something that was completely unexpected by both Giants and NFL fans alike, but Patrick Graham and the additions of last offseason and James Bradbury and Blake Martinez and Leonard Williams taking that next step, all of those factors combined uh, to make one of the best defenses in the NFL, quite frankly, a bend but don't break type of defense that would allow teams to march down the field but not score at all. And they still did a good job in terms of getting turnovers and holding teams in check. Our defense shares the same spotlight with the likes of Tampa Bay, the Indianapolis defense, and the Pats defense. Even with some shortcomings last year on the roster, for example, our edge rushers position and other than Bradbury in terms of cornerbacks, it was kind of a struggle there. We still came up as the 16th overall passing defense, so smack dab right in the middle and we know that's going to improve this year and then we ended up as the 10th overall rushing defense. And the Giants rushing defense was going to be stout last year with what was a stacked defensive line. And even though we suffered the loss of Dalvin Tomlinson, this year we did replace him with two or three guys that could definitely replicate what he was doing in pieces at the very least. Speaking of run defense, let's start off the video with one guy that was thought to only be a run stuffing defensive tackle. Giants defensive lineman Leonard Williams the big cat the lion king number 99 you say it he does it this was a guy that had an absolute breakout season last year for the giants standing at 6'5 302 pounds we acquired him in what now looks like a steal of a trade from the new york jets sent a third and fifth round pick their way for who was at the time in his fifth season with the jets and wasn't really making too much progress seemed to peak in his second year came over to the giants helped our run defense tremendously in 2019 you could see the impact the moment he landed here and was somebody that got a good amount of pressures for us and in his short time with us got 11 uh total quarterback hits he was getting close to the qbs he was getting tackles for losses he was getting pressures but he just couldn't finish the job and get all the way there well, in 2020, we both know what happens. 11 and a half sacks, 30 quarterback hits, 57 total tackles, 14 tackles for loss. Almost every single one of those numbers are career highs and it wasn't close. He earned himself that big contract extension he was looking for and Leonard Williams in terms of production by his position was second only to one man in the NFL and that being Aaron Donald. He did this in a defense that was being coached for the first time by a genius in Patrick Graham as a pass rusher from the inside now they did put him on the edge a little bit but for the most part as a pass rusher on the inside that had help in the secondary from James Bradbury a rookie Darnay Holmes and a good safety duo in Logan Ryan and Jabril Peppers the linebacking quarter was really only one person in Blake Martinez and alongside him on the line it was Dexter Lawrence and Dalvin Tomlinson. Now he has an even better secondary. A secondary that in my opinion could be top five this year with James Bradbury, Odori Jackson, a big signing, a second year Darnay Holmes, and we all know there's people behind them, along with Xavier McKinney added into the safety mix. And while the D-line lost T Tomlinson, like I said before, they have replaced what would have been his production, but that actually helps out Leo a little bit looking at his 2021 
uh stat prediction here now i don't think he's gonna repeat with 11 and a half sacks i do think he's gonna get very close though so in 2021 i see this man getting nine sacks for the giants i do see his quarterback hits actually going up okay i'm not gonna say anything crazy but i'm gonna say something like 32 quarterback hits 60 total tackles with 16 total tackles for losses so almost everything went up except for the sacks but don't worry about the sacks going down because i do see him getting a lot more attention this year just based off of the damage he did in the previous season but what that does mean is i do see him opening up chances for the other edge and pass rushers to get their sacks i do see our two edge rushers for example in lorenzo and aziz getting at least seven sacks each maybe sometimes above we'll see and then his fellow lineman and dexter lawrence maybe dexter hits that five sack mark but i see him basically opening up chances for anybody else on the d line next we go over to a man it's probably the most consistent player on the giants blake martinez big blake blake machinas the cyborg whatever you want to call him he is the one guy who either leads the nfl in tackles or is like right there in second or third place for leading the nfl in tackles the tackling machine another nickname throughout there but blake martinez somebody that has yet to earn himself actually let me correct myself somebody that has yet to be recognized for a pro bowl or all pro selection um in the nfl he's definitely earned his spot in my opinion because once again since he became a starter in green bay he's put up at least 144 tackles each season that led the nfl in 2017 he was then fourth in the nfl this past year with 151 third in 2019 with 155 and second in 2018 with 144 as well like i said stays pretty consistent in addition to those tackles he had six quarterback hits last year with three sacks in a year where it's seen blake moving to a bigger market in new york definitely got more attention and more recognition for his game but obviously still not to the degree he deserves because once again zero pro bowls zero all pro teams this is a guy that if you add up all his tackles from 2017 to now would lead the nfl and it wouldn't be close a guy that earned himself a spot as one of the best middle linebackers in the league i think blake is a top 10 middle linebacker in the league you could argue up until i want to say top seven or something that's not the point of video it would be semantics at that point but when you have one of the best middle linebackers in the league on one of the best defenses in the nfl you think they give him a bit more recognition that's not even the point anyway blake was also a really great leader for this team somebody that was a mentor to guys like tay crowder and just a great captain to have that side on the ball i hope he's somebody that we could keep for a long time because he's already the best linebacker we've had in a long time in like 10 years and i think he could be one of the best middle linebackers the giants have had of all time but with that being said let me tell you what i see for him in 2021 very consistent numbers not gonna lie to you let's say 160 tackles 12 tackles for loss six quarterback hits four sacks and you guys might be saying whoa that's career highs in a lot of them what am i thinking to that i say blake is gonna be the one player where the extra game the 17th game definitely shows in his production now it didn't show for leo that much because sacks are way harder to come by than tackles but this guy's game is literally just hitting and stopping players that extra game is gonna show up in his stat line in my opinion i think he's gonna have his career high in tackles his career high in qb hits close to his career high in sacks actually it would be his the second best year in terms of sacks but with a whole extra game to go yeah i could see him getting essentially 10 extra tackles i don't think that's that far-fetched to think about by the way guys i got a question for you all that i want you to answer in the comments do you think the giants will be a better run or passing defense this year i personally think that we would still be a better run defense but honestly with the additions we made in the secondary wouldn't be surprised if it's the passing defense that takes over speaking of which the next guy is james bradbury we got jb24 the blanket bald man strong man yeah i really don't got that many nicknames to james bradbury he's a quiet dude he's somebody that just goes out there and does his job and does it at a pretty high level as well 
The now six-year corner spent his first four in Carolina, drafted by Davey G himself, signed by Dave Gellman last offseason, came to the Giants, had what a lot of people consider a breakout year, but he's been quietly putting up similar numbers in Carolina, I want to say in 2018 and 2019, more so 2018. He came to the bigger market similar to Martinez. He got more recognition, but I think this year he definitely stepped up as well in terms of just being a lockdown corner against guys like Allen Robinson. They were non-factors during the game. Mike Evans, who he bought, battled consistently in Carolina, of course, when we faced the Buccaneers, shut down, was not really a factor in the game. Amari Cooper, not really a factor in the game. Any team we went up against, if Bradbury was put in their number one, which he usually was, they did not make much noise at all. In fact, that's the whole reason we upgraded our second outside corner spot from Isaac Yadam to Adoree Jackson, because we know that all teams needed to do to pass on us was, was to go to the right side. So in 2020, Bradbury gave us 18 pass deflections, three interceptions, 54 total tackles, 10 tackles for loss and two forced fumbles an extremely valuable player on this team that put up what was last year a top five corner performance and top two in terms of just straight up pass deflections last year he was so good that teams were actively avoiding him and passing towards the weaker side of isaac yadam which is the whole reason we went out and got a guy in a dory in the first place and, and i'll say later on i am going to give you guys a bonus and tell you a little bit what i think a dory is going to do kind of like how i did with the uh, edge rushers when i was talking about leonard williams but first let's get to bradbury in 2021 this is what i see him giving the new york giants I think he's going to repeat with 18 pass deflections once again, but up the number to four in terms of interceptions, tackle numbers as well, just like Blake Martinez, I have going up to around 60 total tackles with four tackles for loss, 15 assisted as opposed to the 10 last year. And in terms of force fumbles, just because he surprised us and gave us two, I'm going to say he gives us two again. Now, I'm sure some of you are looking at this and saying, wow, I was expecting numbers that pop out a bit more, numbers that are a bit more impressive, but that's just simply not the kind of guy that Bradbury is. He's, he's just somebody that locks down that number one receiver on the field. He's quiet both on the field and off the field, but you notice the impact. And I mean, it's not like 18 pass deflections is something to sleep on. It was tied second in the NFL last year. I'm sure it's going to be top five in the NFL again this year. I do have his interceptions going up. It's, I just think that's just the kind of corner Bradbury is. He's not somebody like, for example, a JC Jackson who has nine interceptions, but we all know that Bradbury is the better actual corner since he does everything at a high, even elite level, I could argue. And now the reason I kept this interception number low was because, like I said, I was going to give you a little sneak peek at Adoree Jackson. I think Adoree is going to be the one to lead the team in interceptions this year. And I think a lot of it is still going to do with the fact that teams might try to avoid Bradbury and go to that second corner spot, try to test Adore a little bit, even though he's going to be in his fourth year in terms of the amount of games he's played. He's still greener compared to Brad. I think they're going to test him a little bit. And I do think he's going to come up with five or six interceptions on the year. But that is what I got for y'all today, guys. What do you all think? I threw in a couple of edge rushers and Dexter Lawrence and then a Dory Jackson extra numbers in there. But as usual, I kept it small to the three most important players on the defense, just like I did with the offense. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.